everybody. I'm George Riles. I'm here at Last Chance Archery. It's time for another thing a week. But before I get into this and why I got all this stuff up here, I want to let you know, you can take lessons directly from me at improvemyarchery.com. You can do it online or in person. You can go to improvemyarchery.com and see my calendar and you can pick a date and a time that makes sense to you. And I'll be there waiting when it comes time for your lesson. Also, I'll come to your club or your, your uh, pro shop and I'll put on a whole weekend workshop for 20 of your closest friends. And I go from front to back through all of competition, archery, accuracy, mental game, tuning, the whole bit, all the secrets. So if you want a show at your shop or your club, send me an email, georgeriles at gmail.com, or you can just send me a message through improvemyarchery.com and I'll come to your club and we'll do all this in person. So anyway, today I'm gonna show you how I travel with my archery gear. I have been traveling with bows and arrows and stabilizers and binoculars and spotting scopes and all that kind of stuff. I've been traveling with this stuff all my life and this is what I've finally settled on as the best way to travel with gear. And I'm gonna show you a few different variations because based on what game we're playing, whether it's indoors or outdoors or a lot of car travel or whatever, uh, I do it a little bit different, but I'm just gonna kind of go through it because people, um, they're nervous about traveling with their bows. And uh, I'll start off by saying archery equipment is tougher than you think if you take a few precautions. So this is my Easton uh, bow truck case. This particular case, it's got some wear on it. And you know, you can tell by looking at it, it's had some use. Well, the amount of use that this has had is probably 600,000 miles. So it's been on a lot of flights around the world and it's worn, but it's still doing great. And yes, it is a soft case, right? I like to use these kind of cases instead of the hard SKB cases or SKB type cases because the hard cases, imagine if you have an egg in a shoebox and that shoebox comes to a sudden stop and the egg is gonna smash inside the box, right? So one of the things that these softer cases do is they provide a little bit of rumple room so when it gets banged into the plane and banged off of the plane and banged onto the luggage belt, that the bows inside don't necessarily come to a sudden stop. But there's also a few things that I do inside to take care of it. So I'll just kind of show you how I got this packed. My quiver, I've got that right there with my releases and all that. That's in there. And I could also cram it inside, but today it was just easier to put it there. And here's what the inside looks like. Here's where I do it a little bit different. This case has a little separator inside right here, this little thing. And it doesn't really have any padding to speak of, you know, it's pretty thin. And one of the things that will happen is when you take this case, they're gonna say, what's in it? And you're gonna say, sports equipment. The reason you say sports equipment, because you don't want them to pull the full scrutiny alarm of what it is that's inside of here. A lot of times I get by with saying sports equipment, you know, no big deal. It's sports equipment. No need to pay too much attention to this. But um, in some cases they go, oh, well, this is oversized. So you're going to have to take it to oversize and drop it off. And then what they're gonna do is they're gonna open this up, they're gonna take your stuff out, they're gonna swab around on the inside and put all the little tabs in their bomb sniffer and just make sure that you know, you're not trying to blow the place up, right? So what I do, you've heard all the horror stories about bows being dry fired in the airport, uh, parts being left out or dropped on the floor and then you get there and you can't put your stabilizer on because the little thing is missing or something like that. Here's what I do to get around that. I use just plain old, just soft bow cases inside. Now in here is everything I need to shoot this tournament except my quiver. So I can throw my quiver on my shoulder and grab this and just go. And I'm ready to go. I got all my arrows in the arrow tube here. 
All my arrows are in there. I've got my stabilizers here. Uh, Easton has a really cool stabilizer pouch. And uh, if you use a, you just slide the stabilizers in and your weights go in the little pouch here. If you have a ton of weight, like two full setups with 30 ounces or something on it, you may want to put the weights in your luggage bag so that it doesn't put your bow case. But everything you see here is about 48 pounds. So um, I have everything I need to shoot, binoculars even, the whole bit, 48 pounds so I could get on. If you uh, fly with one airline exclusively and you get status, Delta will give me uh, 70 pounds for flying around the country so I can pack this a little bit heavier and they don't give me any guff. So typically if you're like Platinum Elite or Diamond Elite or whatever with Delta or some of the other airlines, you get less hassle about your stuff and they don't charge you oversize, they don't charge you the bag fees. And yeah, Delta might be a little bit more expensive to fly on, but the ticket price is the ticket price. You see, it's not like, oh, and you have your bag fee, and you have your oversized fee, and you have... So sometimes it's more expensive than you think getting a cheap ticket, right? There's a lot of hidden costs there. So just keep that in mind. So I've got my bars in here with my weights just thrown in this little pouch. I can close that off and just throw it in. And then in here, so you can see what I'm doing with the bow, is I just have the bow in here. And today I'm pretend traveling, so I didn't take my sight off. But one of the other things that I'll do is I'll take my sight off and put it in a separate pouch. So Shibuya, uh, they have a really cool just little zipper pouch that you can put your sight in. So I'll take the, the sight and take it off because the two main things that can get damaged here is the sight can get bumped or broken and the arrow rest can get bumped or broken. So that's the two main things that get whacked in travel that'll totally ruin your weekend. So when you're packing this down, pay attention to those things. So you can fix the sight issue, just take the sight off, put it in here and stick that in a separate compartment so it can't get pinned in between the bows and something gets bent or broken. So, but right now I just have it on here and I just throw the bow in the little case here and then zip everything up. And the beauty of having the cases, number one, is it is a lot more portable when you get to where you're going. You can just throw this soft case. I travel with a big team and 10 of us may land on the ground and all of us have bow cases. So having 10 bow cases in a rental car is kind of a thing. So most time when we get there, we ditch the big case and then we just carry this one. So we have a lot more room in the car when we're stacking the stuff. But I have one riser facing this way, right? And then when I put this case in, I can have it facing this way. So the two risers are kind of side by side rather than on top of each other. And that stops them from kind of banging together. So when I have those in the bag and I close this up and zip it down, it's protected. And when the TSA guy goes through and looks through all your stuff, they don't really spend the time to open this stuff up and it all stays together and nothing gets lost or damaged or whatever. And uh, I've been really, uh, I've got a really good track record for getting to where I'm going without any damage at all or parts missing or whatever. So uh, it's not perfect, but it's uh, better than most. So if you don't have a case like this, you can also, Easton has these really cool sleeves that you can just drop your bow into a sleeve like so, and you put your bow in there and, and then, you know, make it tight. And then each bow has its little, little protective case. And then you can stack them in there that way. Um, 
And if you use the little sleeve cases, you can put your arrows in, the, in an arrow tube and then put them inside the little arrow tube slot. Most of these bow cases have an arrow tube slot. And out of all the bow cases out there, uh, Aurora is decent and it's durable, but the bow truck really is seeming for me to be the best. It takes the most miles. It's moderately waterproof, you know, like if it sits on the tarmac and you get rained on, it's moderately waterproof so your gear isn't totally soaked. So it works really well. Now, there's another thing that I do that uh, scares a lot of people uh, when they see how I travel with bows, but because they think that bows are just fragile as eggs, but if you protect the rest and take the sight off and put it in a separate thing, bows are actually pretty tough. So let me show you what I do to kind of further help myself. I'm just gonna move this case out of the way right quick. So I have this Sika Nomad bag, right? And it's like just a duffel that you can fill full of your hunting clothes and all. Well, one day I decided to see if I could fit my Invictus, which is a 37 inch bow. Could I fit those inside of here? And I figured out that I can take these bags and just put them inside this duffel here, like so. Just like this, and I can lay my quiver on top, tripod, you know, all the various little knickknacks and things that I need, and get it all zipped up, and When I have this baby all zipped, it looks just like a duffel bag just full of clothes. And when I, it doesn't look like a gun case, so that doesn't make them nervous. It doesn't look like a golf bag. A lot of times they don't even ask me what's in the bag. And 50-50, I don't even have to take it to oversize to get the x-ray and they don't paw through it. 50% or so of the time, they just throw it on the belt and it goes to the baggage. And I love being able to pass through the airport without any extra scrutiny, without them taking my stuff apart. And I try to take one trip flights so that I'm not bouncing all over because the least amount of times that they handle the gear, the more likely you are to get there without the bag not making it or with it being broken. So. Another thing that I do with this, I can pull this up and I can roll it, but I also get a couple of these things, these big carabiners, and I can take that and just stick it on my bag right there like so. Then I can get my clothing bag and just hook it like this. So I learned this whole bit traveling with the para team and Eric Bennett, he, he only has one arm. So when he gets his luggage, he has it all stacked together in kind of a wagon train. And then he just tips it up like this and just walks out the airport with it. So it's easy to move all of your stuff in one trip. So getting a different bag like this to put your bows inside of and using the internal cases, you can uh, travel a little bit easier without a whole bunch of problems from the airport. Another lesson that I learned is I always write my phone number on the outside of the bag. Phone number, email, and name on the outside of the bag, very conspicuously, because I had one of these bags full of tools several years ago, just like custom tools that I made years ago for taking things apart, you know, and this bag somehow didn't get a tag on it and it just vanished. And I didn't have my name on the outside of it very conspicuously. So that bag never came back to me. But any of these bags that disappear when my name is on the outside, eventually, it might take three months, 
but eventually it makes it back because somebody's got brains enough to read and they see my phone number and address and I end up getting a contact say, hey, we got your bag, you want to come get it or whatever. So write your name really bold on the outside of your bag, phone number, the whole bit, so that if that bag doesn't come back to you, they just stole it, right? Okay, so one more little variation that I do is for tournaments like Vegas, where you're gonna be uh, in your hotel room, a lot of times you'll take your bows out and just walk with your bows to the shooting venue and the whole thing is inside. I use an AR case. So the reason that I use this is I can put my bows and typically only one bow really fits in here comfortably but I can put my bows inside of the AR case, have my stabilizers and all on one side, have the bow on the other, and then I can use the straps to strap my arrow tube on the outside, and my quiver fits really easily in here. So some of you might have seen me, because I get a lot of comments when I'm walking around. I just take this, and just with the bow in it, I just throw this on my back on my back and I can walk through the hotel and get to the chute, pull the bow out, stick the rods on and go without having a whole bunch of stuff in my hands. And if you've ever been to Vegas, when they gather at the um, uh, the elevator or something like that, it gets really crowded and you got bars going everywhere and all. So I find it's easier just to pack it down, throw it in a case and just go. It makes it a lot easier. So. Take some time and get yourself a couple of uh, just a little thin, cheap bow cases and then put your bows in those cases, put them inside your travel case for a little extra protection and your bows will make it without any serious damage and uh, travel will be a whole lot easier than you can imagine. And if you're shooting 36, 37 inch bows or hunting bows even, you can put them in those bags and you don't get any extra scrutiny at all from the airport people and you can travel really easy then. So, uh, so there you go. That is how I travel with all of my archery gear and how I get it around the world with the least amount of trouble. And uh, this methods, these methods are tried and true. I mean, this case here, this has probably this one's fairly new. I had one that it had almost 800,000 miles on it and I finally broke the wheels on it. So this one is fairly new. It's got six or seven trips on it probably. So I'm going to say 100,000 miles maybe. Um, and you see it's got some, some scratches and stuff, but it makes it. It, it makes it in and makes it out and it's uh, remotely waterproof or, or at least water resistant and uh, it keeps the bows. So there you go. This is a Sika Nomad bag. It costs about as much as the uh, Easton Bow Truck bow case. So if you shoot shorter bows, this might be the route you want to go. If you have really big bows, go with the Easton Bow Truck. You can't go wrong with that one. And put your bows in a little thin case to make sure that they're protected from the TSA people pawing through all of your stuff. So thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and like. You can find me on Last Chance's channel. You can look me up on my channel. And uh, I'll see you next week.